What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. And today we're shooting with the Fuji X-H2S and I got kind of a fun little lens from Viltrox. It's a 13 millimeter f1.4. I'm here with Beck. She's standing in the sun back there. We're doing some roller skating action. So come along and enjoy the shoot. All right, so we're using an ultra wide lens. This is 13 millimeter. So we can do cool stuff like leaning into the camera and like really extending like your leg out to the cam like the camera and stuff. I just have to make sure I'm not a shadow. Yo, know, this is so cool. That's amazing. I wanna show you in a quick second here. It sucks cause like my shadow is like yeah. everywhere. So I have to stay back like this far. You might have to move up like into the light a little more. That's dope. Uh, if you can extend that leg out like more, yeah. So it's like right in the frame. Yeah, that's sick. But keeping your head off the sh shoulder like, like that, yeah. What if you did something crazy, like put it against the back wall? Yeah. Can you lower it so that it's like more elbow level? Something like that, yeah. I know it feels weird, but on this, it looks amazing. Oh, that's so sick. <laughs> Check this out. We got sunglasses too, if you want to put some on. Let's just see what they look like. Lean forward into your left knee. Bring your hands like right up front too, if you can. Yeah, that's cool. Now it can't find your eye. I'll have to find it for it. And looking off, oh yeah, that's dope. Taking a little deeper look at the Viltrox 13 millimeter f1.4, you could fool me if this said Fuji on the side because it feels like a Fuji lens. It's built like a Fuji lens, nice build quality, smooth focus ring, a nice clicky dampened aperture ring. And that aperture ring goes from f1.4 all the way up to f16 with an auto selection. It's also got a USB-C port for updating the firmware on the metal mount. And overall construction of this lens is really nice and it's not that heavy, only at 420 grams. You might have to bring your uh, one leg into the light a little more. Yeah, like that. That's amazing. This is art. Seriously. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Look. Nice. Whoa. One more. <laughs> one more. And I think we got it. Three, two, one. Open. So good. Good job. Crushed it. All right, let's go in here. <laughs> I forgot you're on roller roller skates. I know, right? All right. I wish they were in the sun, but they're not. I don't know if I'd love it anyway, but that's cool. Bring that left, uh, right arm in a little. You can lift it up, but bring it in closer. And then look off towards the light. This lens is really fun. Almost lean forward a bit. Yeah. So sick. I, I, I have become a big fan of like ultra wides for portraits now. Same, same thing, but let's uh, push off the wall. The eye detection on this camera is so good. I'm not used to that from Fuji. Just want to jump in the Lightroom real quick and show you what these shots look like unedited because up until now I've been using my preset to adjust the colors and everything. And what I find really interesting right off the bat is how straight this lens is. There's no barrel distortion or pin cushioning. And that's even with lens corrections turned off. I'm not sure if there's something going on in camera, but and this is the raw file. So there should be some bowing. You would see that if you didn't have any lens corrections turned on. Also check out the vignetting in the corners. It's really not that bad. Like 
that's pretty good for an ultra wide lens i'm pretty impressed with that obviously we were on a slant so that's why it doesn't look that straight but if you look at the center line that's the level of the shot and i haven't put any color on the shot this is straight out of the camera just raw if you go to my presets here you can see we can adjust some of the things here and i've been using my cn1 preset on all of the shots and i just you know bump the exposure a little bit and warm it up and adjust the tint and we're getting pretty close to the exact preset that I had for this and it looks amazing. And I'm gonna actually put these presets on sale. I'm gonna drop it 40%. So if you're looking at getting my presets to use on Sony or Fuji or Canon, especially if you have Sony and you wanna have something that looks more like a Fuji color tone, then you can get my presets at classicports.com. Uh, just look at one more image here. You can see the detail, it's nice and sharp. We got this angle really good here. Uh, if we put my preset on CN1, brighten it up a bit, boost the shadows, lower the highlights a tiny bit, warm it up, adjust the tint. And one other thing I did was the hue on the wheels. The hue here, we went a little bit more greenish blue and bumped the saturation up and that looks amazing. And I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Let's get back to the video. So this is a really cool spot right through here. I don't think I've seen anything like this in a photo before. I say we stay at this end so that we get the depth of how far down it goes so we'll start at like this area oh my dang this looks so good yo this is so dope can i get the hair off this side so we can see the earrings i just freaking love having that i just like having that as like a little uh accent you know can you bend your arms a little so they're not as straight yeah Even this area here is kind of cool to shoot in too. Looking straight ahead now, like out this direction. This is a really super unique lens in the Fuji lineup. There's nothing like it. I was actually really impressed with the fast and smooth autofocus. It did an excellent job with the eye tracking, especially on a beta firmware XH2S. And I assume that there's gonna be some updates to improve it even more, but it did a really great job. There's little distortion, little vignetting, which is insane for a lens this wide. And it's just got a really good optical formula. I think they did a really good job on this lens. It's not that heavy. It's kind of similar to like an XF 10 to 24 F4 if you've ever used that lens. But for a prime lens, that's a little bit big. And it doesn't have any weather sealing, so that's kind of a downside. But overall, it's not that expensive. It comes in at around $429 US. And they also make it for Sony E-mount. This whole shoot was such a vibe. Uh, we shot mostly with the Viltrox 13 millimeter. It was pretty dope. We had some amazing lighting, but that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Make sure to follow Beck. <laughs> I feel bad. I felt like I cut you off. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. All right. Whoa, she's still going.